guys so in this video we will be understanding a important question the name of the question is sorting elements of an array according to their frequencies or you can say count basically we are going to sort arrays according to the frequency or their count so more the count the earlier the element comes so let's take this example here we had 5 5 4 6 4 so now 5 has count to 4 has count to 6 has count to 1 so 6 comes in the end and out of 5 and 4 suppose we have two elements who have the same count so the smaller elements come first just like the normal sorting order so we need to consider two things here first we need to map all the elements with their count then we are going to sort them but we are also going to check their values when we are sorting so the approach will be first we will create a map where we will have int comma int that means number along with its frequency but then we will convert it into a vector because sorting a vector is much easier we can create our own comparator class so we will be compare we will converting into a vector to convert it into a vector the vector needs to be in the form of pairs the pairs are going to be in the form of int comma int that means the character the number along with its count in the array then we are going to sort the vector according to our own generated comparator class so now let's look at the code let's understand how we did it and how we solve the problem okay so here we had a function in which we had to return a vector of the sorted array according to the frequency and we had the vector the original array and the size of the vector so first we created a map in which we map the element along with its count in the array from the begin to the end next we created a vector of pairs where the first value of the pair is the number itself and second is the count of the number and we push all the pairs next what we do we need to sort from begin to end but according to a comparator class which we have created before this function now move let's move to the comparator class that we created so here we have the comparator class so the comparator class will be taking two pairs pair a and pair b it will be checking the second value second value is the frequency if a dot second is equal to b dot second then we are going to give preference to the lower value otherwise we are going to give preference like the original order i hope this is clear let's look at it again so basically we are going to have two pairs a and b and we are going to compare their frequencies that is the second value if they are equal we are going to give preference to the lesser value otherwise we are going to keep we are going to give preference to the one with the more frequency so i hope this is clear now after we sort the array according to this comparator class we are going to traverse to the vector and if yeah we are going to traverse to the vector and if the first value the count of first value in the map is not equal to 0 we are going to increment it into the original array and otherwise we are going to just skip it basically what we are going to do here is we are putting all the values one by one we have sorted the vector right see we have sorted this vector so let's say the elements are 4 4 5 5 6 so it will take 
and if the count of 4 in the map is not equal to 0, it will put 4 in the array. It will increment to the next 4, but it will decrement the count. So, now again 4 is inserted. After decrementing the count, the count of 4 becomes 0. So, it is removed from the map. Similarly, for 5 and 5, we are inserting 5 in the array. The reason is that we are here returning a vector. So, we have to change the value of the vector so that we can return the ve correct vector. So, we are basically checking the count of a character of a number in a map. If it is not equal to 0, then we will put it in the array. We will increment the array count and we will decrement the count of the number from the map so that we can move ahead. If we do not decrement the count, it will be stuck on the first value because it will never be 0 and it will never be able to move ahead. So, after this, we will just return the array. I hope you understood the logic. Now, let us move to the submission part and see if it is running for all the test cases or not. So, here we have the problem and here we have the code. Now, let us submit the code and see if it is working for all the test cases or not. You can see that it is 100% accurate. The time complexity is very less, like very close to 0. It is very perfect. So, the algorithm, the logic that we applied is very nice. So, I hope you liked the video. I hope you understood the logic behind the video and the problem and you will be able to solve the problem on your own. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.